How to decide the departure order. Instructing an aircraft to line up on the runway to wait for the takeoff clearance may seem like a simple no-brainer task controllers do a hundred times a day. But in reality, this is one of the most complex decisions an air traffic controller can make in their entire career. Let's get into it. In some cases, deciding which aircraft gets to take off first can be really simple. Sometimes, all the departing aircraft are already spaced out so that everyone is taxiing towards the holding point with several minutes of gap in between them. Then, of course, the one reaching the holding point ready for departure goes first. But what if there is more traffic than that? What if there's more than one taxiway, several holding points, and a full house of aircraft anxious to get to the runway for takeoff? What factors does the air traffic controller have to consider when deciding who's going to be the lucky one to go first? Watch until the end of this video to learn the paramount elements of this departure scenario. Let's start with the easy ones. Slot times. For air traffic flow management purposes, aircraft can be assigned a calculated takeoff time. This can be done locally. For example, the approach control or area control unit informs the tower controller of a time when the aircraft should be airborne. Alternatively, the takeoff time can be assigned from a wide-ranging system like the Network Manager Operations Center run by Eurocontrol and covering the whole Europe. In both cases, this is a mandatory guideline for the controller responsible for the takeoff clearances. They have to get that aircraft airborne as close as possible to this assigned time frame. Sometimes it means keeping the aircraft at the holding point and letting others pass. However, the controller could also need to make this particular aircraft skip the queue to make it to the slot time, regardless of other flights waiting for a long time at the holding point. For example, a flight has a calculated takeoff time of 12.30 UTC. The startup approval for this flight is given at the correct time, considering the time needed for taxiing to the runway. The ground and tower controllers have to arrange all other traffic so that this particular flight reaches the runway holding point and is ready for takeoff at 12.30. Needless to say, the more flights with these assigned times there are, the more complex the taxi sequence becomes. The next item on our departure order list is wake turbulence. As you are probably aware, all aircraft are categorized into a specific wake turbulence group. The categories super, heavy, medium, and light are still in use in many parts of the world. The most recent IKO RECAT wake turbulence classification goes from groups A to G, where A is the heaviest and G lightest. For example, Airbus A380 is group A, Boeing 777 is B, Boeing 767 is C, the Airbus A320 is D, Embraer 190 is E, ATR 72 is F, and Cessna 172 is G. Just like a radar controller has to apply distance-based separation to all traffic according to these wake turbulence categories, a controller in the tower has to apply time-based separation between the departures from the same runway. In IKO RECAT, if there is a heavier aircraft departing first and a lighter one behind, the time required in between varies from 80 seconds to 180 seconds, depending on the aircraft types. For example, if there is a Group D category, Airbus A320 going first, the tower controller has to ensure at least 120 seconds in between before a Group G Cessna 172 can take off. That same Group D Airbus A320 has to wait 80 seconds if it's going behind a Group C Boeing 767, and a Group B Boeing 777 needs to wait 100 seconds if it's going behind a Group A Airbus A380. In this sense, it would be ideal to avoid this time-based wake turbulence separation completely by arranging the departure sequence by their categories. All the lightest ones go first, and the heaviest Airbus A380s take off last. That way there would be no need for anyone to wait for the wake turbulence to dissipate. But of course this is not realistic. We are probably never so lucky that the flights would arrive at the holding point ready for departure in reversed wake turbulence category order or it wouldn't be fair to let the heavy aircraft always wait just for a lighter aircraft to get in front. Controllers try to group the same category of aircraft whenever reasonable. But to understand this decision-making better, we need to move on to the next chapter. Let's call this one departure split. This means thinking into the future, what happens with the flights right after the departure? A common scenario is that when an aircraft gets airborne, the control responsibility is transferred from the tower controller to a radar approach controller who is responsible for keeping all traffic separated vertically by 1,000 feet or by a lateral radar separation of three nautical miles. 
The idea is that the tower controller must always hand off traffic to the radar controller clean so that there is either one of the separation methods between two consecutive departures when the radar controller assumes the responsibility of the traffic. But there is an exception to this. The tower controller responsible of the departing traffic can arrange the consecutive departures so that the initial turns after takeoff will be in different directions. The controller can launch two departures quite tightly after one another, keep both aircraft on their frequency, and visually observe the turns to ensure there is no collision risk. By using this method, it would be ideal to have the departing aircraft taking off in an order where every second one turns to the left and every second to the right. And just like with the wake turbulence categories, this is of course not always possible. Sometimes a slightly longer time is needed for the first flight to gain distance and altitude before the next one can be launched to follow the first one in that same direction. From now on, things get a lot more complicated, especially when the departure sequence efficiency needs to be optimized to the max. Sometimes the sequence that may seem most logical, efficient, and fair is not the best. To understand this fine-tuning better, check out these examples. Two aircraft of the same heavy wake turbulence category are ready for departure. One has already reached the holding point and the other is just about to stop. Instead of letting the second one stop as well and letting the first one line up the runway, it may be easier and faster to use the momentum of the second one to line up and take off first without stopping at all. Sometimes getting a long haul heavy aircraft moving will require a significant amount of time and any possibility of keeping the wheels continuously in motion should be taken advantage of. In the next scenario, the aircraft are identical again. One has an estimated flight time of three hours, and the other is an ultra-long 15-hour flight to another side of the world. Which one goes first? The one with the shorter flight time. Usually they are lighter and the initial climb performance is better. By having that one in the front, you'll have them handed off to the radar controller quicker with the required vertical or lateral separation in between. Knowing the aircraft types and their typical behavior well is often extremely important. Two aircraft are ready for departure and one aircraft is on the final approach for the same runway. The wake turbulence categories of the departing aircraft are not the same, so letting the lighter one go first would be the logical choice. But this lighter one requires an engine run-up after lining up on the runway. This could potentially lead to the arriving aircraft commencing a missed approach procedure due to the runway still being occupied by this light aircraft, not commencing the takeoff, or even worse, already beginning the takeoff run, but too late for the runway to be available for the landing aircraft. Then the tower controller has to manage the situation safely between the aircraft on the initial climb and the one doing the missed approach. Just like shuffling a deck of cards, the departure sequence with all the factors involved can end up in millions of different variations. Every detail affects the situation, and usually the decision-making requires considering several key points to make the departing traffic flow as smooth as possible. Here's one example. Two aircraft are about to take off, and they are heading in the same direction right after getting airborne. One aircraft is lighter than the other, so it would be faster to let that one go first, right? To avoid the wake turbulence separation? Not necessarily. Remember the rule of handing over traffic clean to the approach controller. When they depart in the same direction, there has to be a bit of a gap in between so that the radar separation can be maintained. So if the lighter one goes first, the heavier one in the back still needs to wait for a while. To kill two birds with one stone, it is probably better to have the heavy go first. When enough time has passed for the wake turbulence not to be a factor anymore, there is usually enough gap between the aircraft for the radar separation as well. Then how do you get the maximum amount of traffic airborne safely in the shortest time frame? Usually it requires efficient use of reduced runway separation minima. When we're talking about medium and heavy category passenger aircraft, the preceding aircraft has to be airborne, and at a point at least 2400 meters from the threshold, when the next aircraft can be given a takeoff clearance. To take advantage of every single second, this succeeding aircraft has to be given the lineup clearance precisely to be ready for the takeoff clearance when the first one has passed the reduced runway separation point and the ground controller must constantly feed this tower controller with traffic in the correct order with all the relevant factors taken into account. The tower controller is like a machine 
with a finger on the trigger launching the departures accurately and loading up the runway with the next one, not wasting any moment in this time critical process. Want to learn more? Join us for more ATC training videos. See you there.